All right, we are live. So I guess I guess to start off, we should just like, so we should just introduce uh, ourselves and stuff. So I mean, myself, I'm I'm Hardy Pace, and I mean I've done a lot of writing for uh, ESFI, Mobile Fire, places like that for the past two years now, and then obviously this is my first venture into you know live video, and we have Alan. Alan, you know, hit them all up with your with your deets. Okay, um, I'm Alan LaFleur. I've been riding in the scene for about two years now. Started at North American Star League. That was like my big, big first gig, I guess you could say. I'm the content director at ESFI. And my internet looked like it just went down. <laughs> um, and then from from there, we... Uh, we went to Mobile Fire. I also have a lot of background in East and sport business for like marketing, and um, and uh, I have a textbook to my my name, the uh, the advanced theory and practice in sport marketing because that just makes me sound really smart. <laughs> and um, and that's about it. That's where that's my background. That's where I'll be coming from during all this. And uh, yeah. All right, well, let's hear from the guests because that's the people that really matter. So, uh, John, that's why... right. <laughs> John, well, I can't follow up what Alan just said. I mean, he's got a book. He's man. got a book. I know. A book is nothing to fuck with. Okay. <laughs> oh, are we allowed to say that, by the way? Let's establish that oh, from the beginning. Yeah, can I? Because this could get very heated. Are we allowed to do any sort of cursing? Let, let, let's keep it PG. Let's uh, to All a right, minimum. <laughs> let, let, let's, be, let's be an example for professionalism. <laughs> Okay. My first four words into the foray of TV yeah. are including fuck, so I apologize. Yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll, John, I'll, I'll, turn I'll turn that. <laughs> All right, John. Why don't you give yourself an introduction? Okay. Uh, my name is John Clark, and I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> oh no, wrong. Wrong meeting. Yeah. No, I um, I've been in esports for a long time. I'm an old dude. Um. I've seen it go through a lot. I am currently at um, the International Gaming League. I was formerly with the Cyber Sports Network, formerly with the National uh, Esports uh, e League or NESL. I have been at OGL, the GGL, which is the Global Gaming League. I did some work at ESWC um, and various other things, some of my own projects uh, many years ago. I am a Quake 3 player, well, was. I'm now playing a game called Offensive Combat, and uh, when I have an opportunity to play. Uh, let's see, I have something that I've started called Esports Solutions, which is an opportunity for those that are interested in getting involved in esports or already involved um, to be connected with people that are looking for their, uh, for their talents. So uh, I do a weekly show with Chris Chan, Some of the, uh, a lot of people in the StarCraft II community will know who he is. Um, called Climbing the Ladder. That's every Tuesday, so that'll be tomorrow, 3 p.m. Central. That's good show. Uh, thanks. And um, my forte, I guess, or the thing that I really enjoy since I've been involved in sports all my life is the understanding of structures, brackets, tournaments, different systems that are involved. Um, you know, I started out basically running my own leagues, my own tournaments, and that's kind of how I got started in, in esports. So All that's right. my well, um, I guess. So, Eric, why don't you give yourself an introduction as well, then? Uh, I started <laughs> playing Christ <laughs> years ago. Um, I didn't never. I was never very big into video games when I was very, very young. Uh, I think I started playing initially when I was too young to get into bars but old enough to drink, I guess. <laughs> and um, the first thing that got me into it was my brother started playing video games. He was a little bit younger than me, a couple years. Um, and I'd come home from bars, and he'd be up late and be playing and competing. And I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, well, oh, I'm sorry. I keep, you know, <laughs> trying to keep it PG as I can. But I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, what are you doing? And uh, he got into it, like, super, super young. Uh, or super, super into it when he was younger. Um, and then I kind of, like, took off of that. Like, he, he kind of fed that into me. And the first game I ever played was Unreal Tournament 99. Um, and I got 
good at it in the first. He was at he was on he was on the very best team of Unreal Tournament '99 that ever existed at the time, um, and then I kind of took off from that with kind of not playing on his laurels, if you would, but making a name for myself. And the first name I ever played was Aspag, and Alan may be able to say, you know what, maybe you should still have that name. <laughs> maybe you should still <laughs> play under the name Aspag, but. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't allowed in the first team I wanted to compete in with that name, so I had to change it to Usurp. And Usurp I thought was fitting for uh, Capture the Flag because if you, if you know what the term Usurp means, it means to take something that isn't yours with, with force, so on and so forth. <laughs> I played for years and years and years and years and years under that name. Um, probably tormented my good, very, very, very fair share of admins, uh, probably including John when he was at NESL, mm -hmm. and got too old to compete and decided, you know what, I'm sick of the way people run events, I'm sick of the way people hold events, I'm sick of the admins, I can't stand how unprofessional it is, I can't stand how... After you just used the F-bomb like five times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just and there's a, there's, a, there's a huge... Believe me, if, if this show was held eight years ago, there'd be a beyond troll tinge to it. But I, I was sick of the way it was, it was done. But I'm a, I'm a, I'm a professional. Um, I, I understand the recognition between play and work. Um, so now, now, right now, it's, for me, it's work. It's, it's being the professional to make events better. And I, I, one of the reasons I got into uh, eSports was through John. And the way I got through was making sure that, I don't know if you know who Chris Hill is or who the no, Hills are. Go ahead are and tell us who that is. Within no, eSports. <laughs> but we got into it... Um, it was me, John, uh, I'm not going to name names, a couple other guys that were very, very vocal about making sure that he does not have another view within eSports ever again. And that's how I got into adminning, and I got into adminning through uh, Quick Live. It, well, well hold on, hold on. Well, hold on, let me tell you, let, let, me, let me elaborate on the story of how you got started. So yeah. when we were discussing in these forums and whatnot about tournaments uh, tournaments and stuff somehow it got brought up uh, between Eric and I a conversation started and he's like oh admin can't be that that difficult you know <laughs> he, well his, his thinking no, no, was no, that he said, he knew of ways it. he felt of ways that it could be done better right he's like well you know it just shouldn't take that much or whatever and so I said all right I'm gonna call you on it we are you interested to, you know to check it out and see what it's like and he jumped at the opportunity and and um, did did great with it, so. Yeah, I initially thought I'm like, I'm like this is not that, diff it's not got that goddamn difficult. It's not hard. It's not hard. It's, there's not enough time. Like, all you gotta do is this, 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 and then, John kind of jumped at it like, well, you know, I'd love to have you on. Like, you know, like jump at it, and I did. And since then, I'm like, well, uh, it's kind of a, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's, it's definitely a lot of work. Mm -hmm. so. uh, well, I guess. Speaking of criticizing, you know, tournament structures and the likes, I guess I guess one of the main themes of the show is obviously tournaments and their structures. So I know me and Alan ha probably have different views than than you two. Maybe maybe not so different. But on on the concept of weekend tournaments as a as a just an idea, like versus you know the longer tournaments. You know, you have the season tournaments and the leagues. What are your guys' view on them? What do you think is the is the better? What do you think is more productive for esports? I guess to give it, you know, what do you think is just okay better? Um, in regards to weekend tournaments, I think they uh, certainly have their place in esports, especially now as we continue to build um, upon uh, a proper infrastructure and proper formats for for leagues and tournaments. So I think weekend tournaments are really good, and um, especially now. But we have to remember this is the way it's been done for, for quite some time. There are better ways at which to do it and still have you know weekend tournaments. And I, I've proposed this before that um, the collaboration between DreamHack, MLG, and 
and ESL are it, it could be a very good thing if they uh, collaborate the you know when these weekend tournaments are make them some part of some sort of circuit. I mean think think golf or tennis when you're thinking about weekend tournaments and if you can find a way right. to kind of make them work together, I think they can be very good if you can create some I'm, sort of circuit out of it, as long as there's always an open component. And when I say open component, uh, I mean an open qualifier of some sort to get into these tournaments. I think, see, they're, now, I think they're viable. I think a, I think a, a weekend tournament system like a, a tour, like the PGA Tour or something like that, it works in a single player game like StarCraft. I don't think it works very well in a team game. Um, I agree. Especially, I agree. especially a team game that is very dependent on strategy, like the MOBAs or the, um, or you know, even the shooters. Yeah. Why? I think why, games, why the difference? Why the difference between? Um, because then, like, it, well, then the weekend tournament becomes more of a stamina, uh, more of endurance than actual strategy, which the game is all built around. Um, and I, I think that cheapens the experience. You mean in the um, number of uh, matches that they'll have to play? I mean, you just feel like yeah. there's too many in a weekend tournament? Exactly. And I also don't like that weekend tournaments kind of chain the viewer to their desk. Uh, I don't think that's a good system. But um, I think it's just more a symptom of the early land culture, like the very, very early yeah. land culture where you had to – tournaments, eSports e tournaments were relegated – Back in the day, you, you, it, was, it was kind of like a, a saying, if you would, like, you know, do it on land or, you know, don't do it at all or whatever the hell that popular saying is. But mm -hmm. all lands are pretty much weekend based, based on the fact that it was a, it's a secondary thing, for, for at least us in North America. I mean, maybe it's different in Europe or in, in Asia, but lands are always based on weekends. And every all of the play, all of the play that you had to, to prove yourself, was based on this like land, like weekend, 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 and you had to travel all this time and spend all this time and energy and and playing in lands. I've, I've played in lands. So I've had to travel, and it's ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous to have to put all this time and energy into proving that you're a professional, especially where esports is right now, given the fact that. Riot and in other in other developers can do it at least allow players to be full time and it's all it's all weekend based in in my opinion it's completely ridiculous to expect weekend based events to be the standard tournaments yes tournaments absolutely thursday friday saturday sunday uh I think that's the standard for like tours with with golf and uh Tennis, other sporting events, um, and maybe some certain esports like like StarCraft, where it's one on one based. Uh, oh. Maybe that works, but on, on team based stuff, I, I don't I don't think it works at all. Long okay, so so what you're saying is weekend soccer tournaments are uh, are not viable either. Then to determine well, no, 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 skill. No, okay. no, I'm not saying it's not viable. I'm not saying it's not viable. I don't I don't think it's at the very optimal. top. Yeah, I think the, I think it'd be at a the case very of tip top of the of the of the competition scale, I don't think it's the best way to do it. I okay. think it's I, can agree I think with it's that. optimal from a from a lower standpoint of play. Absolutely. I mean you can't I mean you and I, we're competitors. We're old. We can't, you know we can't run around playing on Tuesday nights at two in the morning, you know. <laughs> but mm. at you know, Saturday at one o'clock in the afternoon, if it's planned out, we certainly can. But professionals I don't think if you want to start getting into professional stuff, they can't be expected to be professionals only on weekends. It's it's their job. Yeah, I would even I would even venture to say that it's not even the best system for a game like StarCraft Two, where it's one v one. I think it it works okay, but I don't think it's the best system. I think our best system would still be a league. I think I think you're going to find the best players will rise to the top of a you know three month long league then in a weekend tournament. I don't think you, I don't think a weekend tournament is the best way to find the best individual um, player or team. 
Well, I mean, well, it never is, but it's always been presented that way. MLG has always presented their weekend tournaments as some mm -hmm. sort of championship where every the person that wins is like the greatest player in the world. And they've done this because of branding. They've done this because that's been their business model. Um, and they've done this because again, that's how it's always been done. That's right. They've it's always, always been done that done way. This because this, people play games on the, on, on the weekend. There, there is no, there, there's no quote-unquote sustainable business yet. Mm. Like and, we don't and, have and, a, a, a Monday league. Like there's no way to do. And a I can Monday certainly league. agree that happening. leagues are a much better choice. I'm just not quite sure. As much as I'd like to believe it, because I've I, I pushed for leagues since I was since 2005, and I was GGL. Um, but we're not at a point where I think overall, not just in in the case of League of Legends, but I just don't think overall that we're at a point to have a sustainable at least. Uh, a sustainable league that embodies more than just one game. Uh, Riot is doing something very, very, very different. Um, it's not anything new, but they're they're actually doing it and they're trying to put a lot more structure into it. Um, and I applaud them for that. But I think for overall, like having multiple games at a single event or within a single league or whatever it may be, I think we're a ways. Um, I think we're a ways away. What do I you don't think you need to have all the events at a. All, all the games at a single event. I think I think leagues should be separated per game. I think once you bring in all the different games into a single event, you're going to start running into just you know way too much investment required. Well, again, again, that's that's the model that's been used in the past because these are these are net, these are more spectator events. Um, and we're and obviously as time's gone by, it's become more of a viewer event in which you can watch from your home, but. Uh, before it was simply, you know, let's hold a big LAN event. Uh, as Eric said earlier, it was really that's what it was, was weekly yeah. LAN events. Um, and that's exactly how MLG got started. And now it's turned into uh, weekly WWE events. Um, <laughs> I've used that analogy before, but that's really what it is. It's a, it's a showcase of a bunch of really good players. Um, sometimes the formats are put into place that, that help define the, the, the winners that they would like to see win. Um, which of course takes away from real competition, and that's what they are. They're and they're a weekend uh, way to to make money for or to to build a brand name. I wonder if we can get the Undertaker to show up. Anyway, go ahead, Hardy. Well, what do you guys? Obviously, I, th I feel like it's fairly intuitive that we're gonna mo be moving away from having multiple games at one event. Or I just feel like as the games grow. It's just not going to be plausible anymore. I mean, see, I, I, I disagree with that. Actually, I think we're going to see more games at more events. Uh, because I, I agree initially, with party. Well, initially, uh, initially, developers are going to get involved at a base level. They're not going to be able to do what Riot ha has done. So you're already seeing it. Look at IPL six. Uh, they, they've already said they'll have it probably seven different games. I well, mean, the reason being is because the developers are starting to get more involved. And by doing so, they're not at a point at where Riot's at where they're like, they've got a sh crap ton of money and they're able to just put it in running their own stuff. They're going to put money into having their game featured at these events. And I can tell you right now, uh, IPL and IEM and uh, MLG are not going to turn down money to run World of Tanks. We've already <laughs> seen this happen. So I think, you're going to, I think you're going to see more games at more events for a while. And then you're going to start, and then you possibly might see more developers doing exactly what Riot's doing, and then you'll start to see leagues maybe trimming it down to a few of the top games because we'll start to find a sustainable business model. But until we get to that point, I think you're going to see an influx of games at events. Well, I think it's right. Um, all right. Well, I think it's important to differentiate between what I mean between between like different events because I think that events like MLG and IPL are, are going to be. I mean, for lack of a better word, relegated down from, like, high competition to almost a way to introduce, like, great new games like World of Tanks, etc. I feel like, yeah. I feel like as the... All right, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> great new games. But, all right, whatever. <laughs> but what I mean is, you'll have a higher... You'll have the highest level... Well, game will be able to reach its peak of, of sustainable highest level competition and then you'll have the other events where it'll be 
the introdu introduction of games where you'll have multiple games but i think as a game grows in pop as as the games grow in popularity there as the desire and demand for the highest level of competition will also grow and then you'll see them leave these mlgs ipls etc and create their own leagues i feel like that's that's sort of the path of what what well, riot's going to do that's exactly what Riot did. Yeah, I mean, like, it's... With, with, with any game, though, it's... The highest path of competition always exists. There's no, there's no such thing as a developer or a league or a community needs to create some sort of mythical tier of competition. That always exists in any single game I, community at all. That I think what, always, I think what it, There's always a... There's always a a top tier competition, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think what we're trying with to you, say is... If you is... mean with like the recognition between a, a developer, I guess? Or... What, I, what I think I mean by like highest level of competition, because obviously you're right, you know, the highest level of competition is defined exactly by that, the highest level of available competition. But the, when you, you can obviously have different uh, like parameters for a a competition i mean when you have you know st strict rules and you know mm -hmm. everything's the same structure and it's and it's everything's defined you you can you can make the argument that it's high highly competitive in comparison to something that's you know loosely thrown together even though the same players are playing in it i think that's what i mean i think the the because i mean it's I, I think that there's an argument for obviously structure can breed competition because if you have something that's poorly structured versus something that's, you know, well thought out and highly defined, then I feel like the competition does rise. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. So you're saying more it's, it's more a uh, structurally based thing versus a community based thing? Well, Eric, John, I think what... John, what yeah, I think what's being said is that that the belief uh, from Hardy is is that we'll start to see games separate themselves from the event organizers like MLG and DreamHack and such, and they'll start to do some of their own things. And by okay. doing so, these organizers like DreamHack and MLG will be second tier in in regards to um, being considered the, t the the highest level of event. So you'll start to see, for instance, with Riot, let's just take Riot for example. Mm -hmm. Riot is positioning themselves to be the top tier. That's where if you want to be at the top, and of course, it's, it, and, and we're forgetting to mention this, it's a lot about perception. Yeah, As Eric pointed out, the, the level of competition can remain strong at any within any organization. But Riot is positioning itself to give the perception that if you want to be at the highest level of League of Legends, that it, you have to play in the Riot League. So these MLGs and DreamHacks and such, they become second tier in nature. And, and mm -hmm. that's where I think what you guys are saying, that's where you believe okay. that, that we'll start to see things move towards? Yeah, that, I think that's pretty much my thoughts on it, is that they'll... Because, they'll, I mean, Riot's already really doing it. I mean, they had the... You used to earn... Like, Season 2, you earned your, your points through these, through these MLGs, IPLs, etc. But now it's... Now they're having their own entire system, and I, it's, mm -hmm. I feel like they're just going to get phased out completely. Especially, I would hope to, I would hope to God that they would not get phased out completely. That will ruin esports, in my opinion. Um, we Riot have to have or these. the game itself. The, the, no, the, the tournament, the tournament organizers. They okay. should be very much be a part. Of, well, uh, of the structure because Riot can't do it all. It's it's obvious they they don't even have they haven't even set a structure up in play in place now to facilitate um, a bottom up approach. They have a bottom up opportunity, but I don't think they've set the structure up completely. And Alan, we talked about this earlier. Obviously, they Definitely. they have partnered with people in creating qualifiers and ways for for people that don't that aren't already in the league giving them an opportunity to to rise up and that's why you have I believe you have to have these event organizers and the collaboration again between ESL DreamHack and MLG could be very very good for esports um of course it's been what 3 months now since it announced it we haven't seen well, yeah, nothing crap. nothing's been done but to expand on that they have the resources to regionalize things 
to a much greater degree. I mean, you can't expect esports to be town based like NFL or you know baseball or football or basketball is like YMCA's so on and so forth. But they have the availability to to regionalize things, and they don't. And that's been discussed for Jesus. I mean, and they haven't done it years, yet. Five but things, years now. I mean, right? But well, but, they, but they, organizations they like Tespa. They, Organizations right. like TESPA are, are doing that in a lot of ways. Yeah. The CSL is, is doing it uh, similar. I think it's a very poor, poorly ran system in, 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 in the way that they've approached it. But TESPA is a very good example of creating a regional-based um, event organizer, in a sense, and, and creating that regional-based competition. Um, and then you go to that next level, where whether it be weekend tournaments or mid-tier leagues, and then the ultimate goal is to get to whatever the, is per perceived as highest tiered competition. And if that's a sustainable league ran by a developer, then so be it. I don't necessarily think that's the right route to take, but if developers want to get involved, they certainly should be welcome. And I've said this to Alan before. I mean, some people uh, that know me um, believe that I have this this really big... A dislike for Riot, and I don't. I just, I, I look at them and see so much potential and so much opportunity, and, and I just, I haven't seen it completely come to fruition yet. So I'm willing to see, to, to yeah, jump on it gonna, once it does. I'm going to go ahead and give you the counter here. Sure. Um, <laughs> give you the business. <laughs> okay, so you're saying that it doesn't have a bottom-up approach when it really does, because here's the way that the system works. It goes from the end game 5v5 ladder where you can play your way up in the ladder which is which is smart that's the way it should work you can play your way up into the ladder get into the challenger tier and then you have a chance to get into the qualifying tournaments that other people have qualified in through like MLGs and IPLs and stuff like that everybody gets thrown into this one big qualifier and through that qualifier they play for a chance to get into the pro league that's about as open as you can get no it, it is Alan I, and, and I just to just to clarify, what I'm saying is Riot themselves have not created that. This is again Riot coming did create from partner. That. Well, but I mean uh, the partners are running it. What I'm saying is Riot is not running that. The Riot isn't running any sort of mid tier league. They're facilitating others helping them do this. That's all that I was you, saying is that you just said that you want the tournament organizers to stay involved. This is them staying involved. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we I was just going back to what we were saying earlier in, in that and that Riot, Riot is not doing that from, from bottom up themselves. They're relying on but, the tournament organizers, and that's very important. I, I think, I think the, from the, the notes the, the, that that's the, the structure that Riot is using is part of the show, I guess. I don't know if we want to do want to just like leap into that now. Like but, you may uh, as well. Or? Let, let, <laughs> yeah. let Alan... so I completely disagree with the way uh, Riot is handling a season, per se. Uh, well, we'll get into that. And, and, and Alan agree disagrees again. as well. Yeah. I think that's a natural but, progression into that, yeah. Um, right. Well, Alan, okay. go ahead and, 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 and comment again. I, I just want to clarify that what I'm saying is that Riot is not facilitating it all themselves. They're working and partnering with other people to do so, and I think that's very important. Wait, okay, So, but but they are. They, they have the partners over here that, like, through IPL six, through IEMs, through mm -hmm. um, through MLGs, I believe. I really don't know about the MLG one. That's but, but what I'm saying is they're not running uh, the websites for no, it. No, they're no, not hold on, running hold on. the tournaments themselves. Hold, hold on, they're they're doing that, and then they also have the ranked five v five ladder in game that also can lead to the pros. Mm -hmm. So you have you have your MLGs and IPLs that can lead there. And then you also have the ranked 5 5 ladder which they run, which they mm -hmm. facilitate that can lead up to it. Right. I, so, I, I, I think I think the 5v5 ladder thing is actually really good because it, it puts an emphasis on team versus individual. Uh, the way any kind of ELO this is why that whole Dota buff Dota 2 thing existed. Is, there's no such thing as ELO when you when you speak ELO about is a horrible ranking system using versus esports, one v one. Which ELO I totally did. Is, is a complete shit show when it comes to esports because you, ELO is, is is a tournament. Is, it's a a ranking system based on one v one, and that system works. When you win, you win. When you lose, you lose. You lose. You win, you lose. ELO. The mathematical formula behind ELO, if anyone wants to look it up, you can go look it up on Wikipedia. It exists and it's good for a very, very specific reason, and that's 1v1. 
when it comes to teams, it's complete junk because you're relying mm -hmm. on, first of all, you're not relying only on your own teammates. I mean, if your teammate sucks throwing his support spell, if you would, that reflects yeah. on your ELA ranking. So now they're using a team-based system. I agree with the team-based system. But their team-based system is it's closed. They're using it within themselves. And to get any kind of real honest level of competition, I don't think esports is necessarily there yet because there isn't a reason to do team-based stuff as in-depth as is needed, in my opinion. But they're doing a very good job of at least moving towards being team-based. But even with their, within their team base, it's, it's still shitty because they use their own proprietary system. There's no community involvement. When, Wait, when you look how, at any... How is it closed? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Anybody can start up a team. I can go start up a team right now and be playing in five minutes. That's not but because you, But because your team is, quote-unquote, not top 32 or whatever they're system but, is but, to use they're not they're not included and then they get into but that I mean, team I would have the option that team would Go then ahead. you know if the team performed well enough they would have the they would be able to get there eventually like every team has a yeah, chance but, to get there nobody's picking people i mean john and i i mean john can speak volumes for this we ran uh open systems with when we were with csn play games and teams that we didn't think would even moderately come close to finishing and winning anything won. I mean, Team We from China won the first tournament we ever threw out there. And they were playing against very, very top tier uh, American teams. TSM didn't even, the first play games we played, I think they, I think they were out in the second round. Mm -hmm. Like they weren't even considered. <laughs> they, they didn't even finish the tournament I mean, and maybe they maybe they maybe they were hung over whatever but still i mean there was still a decent amount of money at that time uh on the line and they they didn't compete at all and, and other teams stepped up and played considerably well and when you consider riot's place as far as comp competition goes i mean they're the ones yes they're the ones that do the I guess ranking of teams, but I mean, who's who's to say that those teams that that ranking system is correct? It's it's in my opinion, it's not. I, I completely disagree with the way the ranking system, even with the teams, goes. But uh, maybe that's something someone else can add some insight into. I, I think I think the league system is about as correct as it can possibly get, since they're doing league points now and not Elo. They're doing tiers, kind of like the way StarCraft Two does it. Um, with the bronze division, the silver division, and all that, it's no longer Elo. Um, but um, then, how do you move up within the the five v five rank leagues? Uh, through playing games and getting Win. and winning. Win. Okay, so there's yeah. no Elo involved. It's it's simply based on winning. No, it's there's like team a rank, it's team ranked Elo is what it is. No, they're well, saying no, that it's team there's team no team yeah. rank. There's no Elo involved. There's well, they have. Ranks. It's the equivalent, I guess you could say. It's they have, they have like league points, and it, there's obviously a hidden MMR involved and everything else. Okay. But it's it's very similar to way the way StarCraft uh, two yeah. um, divisions works and their leagues work. It's, it's and you know when you're getting close <clears throat> to a promotion and all that. Yeah, like, you you earn um well at least in. Is it? It's the same in um, ranked five five teams. Yeah. It's uh, you yeah. earn you earn a uh, hundred uh, league points, right? And in order to go up in next division, you have to win a best of three, and that best of right. three is essentially it's not against the same team. It's just your next three games matter. It's it's mm -hmm. essentially a best I of think three with your next three games, and then to, that's, I think they're so. as very close as they can possibly get to being a a league. They're they're very very close. They're not there. They're not there at all, but they're pretty much as close as you can get uh, format-wise than any, in any other esport whatsoever. Yeah, uh, let's let's move on, Hardy. All right. Well, 
I know, I know Eric really wants to talk about the, the, the overall structure for, um, <laughs> for the season three. So, um, you obviously have a lot, you obviously have a lot of problems with the, with the mid season sort of reset that happens. Right. So uh, do you want to address that? Your, your primary issues with that? Well, when you're in any league, and I think this, I don't even know, I, I don't have any historical perspective whatsoever based on any other league that I've ever been a part of. Cause I, I just literally just don't know. Uh, has any other league in any capacity ever had teams kicked out mid-season? No, I, mean, I think I don't, it, I don't think, I think so. it's important. I think it's important to say something here that if you look on Leaguepedia, they're calling it the spring season and the summer season. But like, if you reset, it, if you reset if you re- wins and losses, a, then you well, you take away that whole idea of it being one complete league. Especially only if you have one championship at the end. I think it's a case of just heavy mislabeling with that. I feel, I feel like they could have labeled it a lot stronger. I think it's mis-experience. I think it's lack I, of I, No, I thought of, that, I thought of that earlier when we were talking in, in our little Skype channel. Um, and, you know, I was going off about the naming and stuff. And, and uh, uh, however, I do feel that that's very important because, I mean, the very fact that we would have any sort of conversation about it means that it wasn't presented in a way that made it very easy to understand and very easy to follow and, and personally easy to, to accept. Um, but then I started to think about it a little bit more, and I looked at the structure, and I asked Alan about the structure, and this is where I think that um, I'll win this argument. When every team that doesn't get relegated after the spring season – makes the playoffs, then you have put the emphasis on just just doing enough to get to the real season, which is the summer season. That's all you've done. Your incentive is just to avoid being relegated because every person, every team that doesn't get relegated makes the playoffs. Technically, you can't even call them playoffs because there's no championship. It's a well, mid-term. Well, it's a mid no, that's just a tournament. That's just a special tournament oh, because sure. it's not really a championship. It's a championship so it's a of playoff. the first half, okay? But if you're going to call it a league, a season that's ran from, you know, the, a, a full league with a single major championship, you cannot reset wins and losses and, um, and expect that you're going to get the results that are desired for competition by the end of it. It just doesn't make sense. Um, you can't. It, it, uh, there's, 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 no, you there's literally, like, there's literally no precedent for it. Like you can't. Like it's, it's all kind of terminology. Like we can use all the terminology we want, but when you're in a league, like if I'm in a, a men's league, soccer, which John is, like if we get, if we paid such and such an amount of money to get into the league, and then you're kicked out at halfway through, like you have to, you have to perform halfway but through. Like it's here's completely, the, it's here's awesome. the big there's a big difference here, and it's an important difference. They're not getting, they're not paying to be in the league. They're getting paid by the tournament organizer to be in the league. Like okay. they're getting paid a salary. So, so then therefore, we can't, then, the, then we can't consider them a real league. Then. Sure, you can. Why? Like, why couldn't you? You can't. Why? Why? Explain that. No, I, I, I disagree. I think you certainly can call it. You can call it a league whether you pay well, or not. I mean, yeah. But that brings up an interesting point. Maybe I just I just feel like there there's are a, much there's a certain ways historic, to create incentive for teams to be involved. Because what you laid out, Alan, was that the perception or that, that our understanding of why they want to kick teams out mid-season is because they are the undeserving teams, right? That was a word that you used. I don't know if that's what Riot has used, but they're considered they, That's not what Riot's teams. used, but... Okay. Riot, but Riot who, hasn't who used those say, words, but so I have. I just feel like there are much better ways to, to battle that perception or those issues, and they do run. Trust me. They, we've all either played in leagues or we've ran leagues, and we understand that at some point, a team just goes hands up in the air and gives up, right? And that's what they're trying to avoid. But I believe that there are better ways at which to do that. One way, lower their salary, 
make them earn it to be there, low, lower the salary, put incentives on the matches. There, those are just a couple of interesting ideas uh, or in, other ideas that you could do. But this mid-season crap where you reset the wins and losses means that your only incentive is to stay above relegation. That's it. That's because it. That's now all, that's all the only doing. season... All you're doing the, is the, why even play the play. first half if the only way you can get into the right. final, the absolute championship, is to play the second half? Then I would just be like, guys, all we have to do is get in the pl- – in, well, they can't call it playoffs because there's no final. But all we have to do is just stay above that relegation. If we can stay above that relegation and get in the second half of the season, that's all that matters. It's like the there, NBA. You know, the only thing that matters is – To expand final, on right? that baby bit is just because they're the first ones to do it to give people salaries – does not mean it's correct. What they're doing is awesome. What they're doing is fucking great, mm-hmm. giving players salaries to, to be able to compete. But you're, you're asking teenagers to move out, to completely move away from their entire lives to be a marketing machine for your company for 10 weeks. They're not And if that's the money. case, they should not I think money. I foster and cultivate those opportunities because those teams are your marketing. Those teams are your brand. And I understand the idea that we don't want teams to just give up. Find more creative ways to prevent that. There are plenty of ways to do it than to kick teams out midseason. Um, See, and, and I, the only I have reason no, I say that – go ahead. Go ahead, Al. I have no empathy for those teams because they are giving every – they know what they're getting into. They are getting no, they, every – they, they, wait, they're, they're getting every single – opportunity to stay out of relegation even when they're in the relegation zone they have a chance to play their way back in right so that's good, i mean that's a good way like yeah but that's and but, plus, but, for but, end of but my my, but my issue though is alan just don't call it a league call it call it season four and season five or season three and season four don't split, call it one split, big league if you're going to reset up. the scores yeah. it makes no sense it, it what it well, comes down like to I said, is a matter it of spring season and summer season but Okay, I but mean, with one the, championship the spring, at the end of at the end of the spring season, they have that tournament that there will be a finals of the tournament. There is a winner of the spring but, season. But technically, right, it but, means but, nothing but because the whole with- league is considered spring and summer. So you might as well just call spring the qualifiers for the championship season. Sure, that's really right. what you call it. I mean, yeah, sure, that's, that's, that's that is a, that's a fair point. Fine. That's what it is. It is a There's qualifier. No I think I think you do make a, a very valid point in the fact that it really the first the first part of the whole season is don't get don't get relegated. I mean you could sit at the you know the fifth lowest or fifth from the from fifth from the bottom position and be entirely safe and then you know actually try in the the second part and win the whole thing despite you know having a, a you know abysmal score in the the first part. But I mean, yeah. I mean, that's a very valid point. I don't. So, I don't so, see somebody any... make somebody makes a point here, and this has been brought up: is that one team can be so far behind that it's impossible for them to come back. Okay, mm-hmm. the word "impossible" um, can only uh, can't be used if um, if we don't know, because we don't know. I mean, if I can go eighteen and two in the first half, it's very possible that I can go two and eighteen in the second half. My only issue with this is that they're re- what they're, all that they're doing is they're, put the in, they're putting the incentive on not being relegated. There, there well, is no incentive. At, I've, I've raised this issue, and it's well, they're, not they're, something that's popular, is that imagine a team like uh, an organization like Dignitas going, let's just 0 and 18, let's 0 and 10. Let's say they just completely screw up, go 0 and 10. As a complete and utter sponsor of a team, they already won one game. So, all right. So let's, let's, let's <laughs> hypothetical say situation. One, let's, 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 let's say let's, they go one and seventeen. Let's suspend reality. <laughs> let's, let's, yeah, exactly. Let's suspend reality, please. Uh, I'm not saying that they will, but imagine they they do. Imagine a a a very prominent sponsor of these teams goes one and seventeen, and they're kicked out midseason. How many sponsors do you think are going to jump at that on season four, five, six, seven, eight, if they know that their teams are going to get possibly kicked out? That is, that is a it's very, it's, it's very, very, it's very, very good question. I mean, how it's do you know? Fault. 
I, hey, and Alan, I agree, so, I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree. It's their own fault. It's, it's but mm-hmm. we're not at a position. We're not at a position in esports for us to 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 be that volatile. That that I think that that's the point that Eric's made. We're not quite at a position where sponsors can just drop left and right, and the teams can still be supported. We need these teams to continue to be um, a brand for Riot, and in order to do that, only, the, the league only. has to be sustainable from a from point A to point B without this mid-season drop stuff. Now, again, I have never had a problem with relegation and promotion. I think that's needed across the board. And there, are, for for years, it was never even, people didn't even know what it's called. In fact, in StarCraft Two, they 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 call it up-down matches, which is this ridiculous thing. But anyway, it's promotion and relegation matches, right? And I'm totally on board with it. I totally agree with it. I love the idea that at the end of a season, a set season, the teams, if the and you know, that's like. The key. Sexy. Basically like the EPL in Europe, right? The English Premier Soccer League or the English Premier Football League. Um, I think that's fantastic, and it's a great way to promote the incentive to, to want to drive up. Um, obviously, the problem with the EPL is there's no playoffs, um, uh, but that's just something here in North America that we like to see is at the end we want to see a real champion instead of just a league champion. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think a combination of the way we do things here in North America and, pro- uh, and the way they do things in Europe with the EPL is a good mix. But this mid-season stuff where you reset the records, it basically then just becomes a qualifier. And that's my problem with it. It's like I'd like to see this league be very successful, but um, maybe set the structure up just slightly different so that teams don't have – I mean, so that it's not all about the fear of being relegated. It's more about the fear of being the champion. I think there's yeah. a fear of both. I think there's a fear of both. And I, I also think if we're going to use a, you know, a king like Dignitas or, or Complexity or somebody like that, if, if their roster goes 2-18, and 18, I'm thinking Odie's sitting on the sideline going, I hope these guys get relegated and we can drop them. Because like, they don't want that associated with their name. They're a name of excellence in esports. You, you get what I'm saying? Like... I don't think they want to wait until October right, and say, if they, if well, let's if get out of this. If they're kicked out mid-season, I mean, what what is the, to say that they want to be involved in the next season? Like, what uh, what monetary reason do they have? That, that's I don't, a, I don't that's a good question, and it's a good question for the sponsors. And Al, as Alan said, that's really on them. And ultimately, it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the Very sponsors true. need yeah. to understand. Yeah. But my point is, is that if... Riot is going to invest in running their own leagues and paying teams to be a part of this system and bringing them out there. Their idea needs to be we are going to brand these teams whether they're 0 and 20 or 20 and 0. We're branding and building a league based on these teams. If tomorrow the Lakers, and I used this earlier, if tomorrow the Lakers were cut mid-season from the NBA, the NBA would be not be the same as it is. No matter what anyone wants to say, the Lakers are a major part of why the NBA is successful. So sure. branding these teams and help building these teams, and when you say, well, if we're going to go 2-18, but- it doesn't mean they didn't try. You know, mm-hmm. It doesn't mean they didn't do everything they could. And you know what? Second half I of agree. the season... They certainly can go 18 and 2. I, yeah, I don't but, know I mean, how the roster changes are working or, or how many roster changes you can make. I would hope to God that Riot has said, you know what? You are Team EG. I don't give two craps about your roster. We're going to have some roster locks and some roster trade deadlines in place like every other sport. Mm-hmm. But if you want to have a completely different roster for the second half of the one season, you are certainly welcome to do so because it's your team and your idea. If we're two and eighteen, we got to make some changes. Whether that's a coaching change or we got to find new players. But you take all of that away and you drop a team mid-season and say, "Well, yeah. we're not even going to give you an opportunity to come back in the real part of the season and, and make a run at things." See, and you know, I think I think the mid-season um, relegation promotion has an interesting dynamic. I think they're going to do a lot with it with storylines, which you know is what they're really focusing on. Sure. Um, I, I absolutely. They're gonna. I, they're I don't really. Add, I don't really care it. what yeah. it does to teams. They'll definitely know. I mean, it. because teams are teams come and go. There's a if your team fails, there's another one waiting to take your place. So, mm-hmm. I think I think every player needs to realize that, and it's up to them to stay in the league. That they know what they're getting into. They knew they knew this ahead of time because. Even though Riot doesn't necessarily talk to us about everything, they talk to the <laughs> players about everything. Right. So um, they, they've known what's going on. Mm-hmm. And 
Well, if they so, cut, listen, it, I think we can all agree that maybe the optimal thing for them to do is if they cut this into two separate leagues with a championship at each one, this system would be fantastic. But I think what we disagree on is the whole midseason thing, correct? That's, well, I think, that's, I think, there, I think, I think that's there is really a championship the, at the end of each one. I think there's just a world championship at the end of the second one. There's just no world okay. championship at, at the end of the spring. I think there's a championship for North America and EU at the end of the spring and summer. Okay, a, and, and, but, a, but, but what are they going to combine the teams in the second half of the season after they've reset everyone's records? Are they going to combine the, the divisions or are they going to bring it together no. or have cross matches or anything? Then it's really not. It's really no different than the first. It's really no different than the spring season then. It's just now you're sure. just going to get the teams together. Um, you just can't get the teams together. Have I mean, I, I guess I can see that, you know. I mean, but call it what I it guess, is. I, and that I is that it, it's. Uh, I think a lot of what the reason they're doing this is they just don't want to support teams that have given up. And knowing these teams in, in the League of Legends uh, professional scene, if they go to an 18, they will give up. Um, that, that, I think that's not, uh, a reason, that's not a reason to. Sure, it is. To if, you're these, no, if, if, if you're paying, no, it's not. How many players, professional sports teams give up? How many? Professional but those professional sports, sports teams, teams aren't up. being paid directly by like the MLB or the NHL. They're being paid by the franchise owners that oh, are that are independent of the MLB, the NHL. That, so, therefore... Except for except a, for Major League Soccer. Well, even Major League Soccer now is. Uh, yeah, they started now. out as... Sing- That's horseshit, though. But, it's, it's completely but, horseshit. But, Alan, when you, compete, you've, you, 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 you follow the MLS as well, and you know that it was very important how they structured things yeah, in the very absolutely. beginning. Absolutely. It was very important. And I just think that we could see more of more of that sort of invol- involvement from Riot. I trust me, I, I said it I mean and, and the, the, I assure the, you the big that my opinions are they're very they're doing some very, very good things here. They absolutely are. Um, but I just think they're missing the, some opportunities. I think we need to quickly draw a line between what Riot's doing and what the MLS did. Because it's not the same. Because and here's the main reason. I think that's a line that needs to be drawn between esports and sports collectively. Well, sure, just, but but let's just, let's go ahead and draw this real quick since we brought MLS <laughs> into this. Um, All right. The MLS ran on a single entity system where everybody was a part of the MLS and the MLS ran it all. And eventually they ran into franchises. Now they're franchised. the The problem here is that in esports in the LCS. There's no other revenue really going on, so You're correct. Um, Very true. They yeah. are they are supplying all of the money that these teams are getting for the most part. Some of them are still getting some streaming revenue, but it's paltry since they're, most of the time they're practicing. Um, and so there, so you have that that thing. You know, these teams are not franchised off of the LCS. They are still individual entities. They're just being subsidized. So if they don't want to subsidize a team anymore because they're not performing up to standards, I don't blame them. It's not like, like, and that's where I think they're coming from. They and I think they also realize that the scene is very volatile in the professional level. Right. That um, they want but, to give. They don't want to have to wait a year to bring in new teams that deserve to be there, while other teams don't deserve to be there any that, longer. That's a that's a very valid point, and it, it certainly is a good point. And it's a good idea on their part. But, uh, but again, I think that they have an opportunity to help um, some of these teams reach um, a more sustainable model. Um, uh, we, I think sure. we can all agree that we can all agree that the whole clan or team thing, clan is a, the old person's word for it, but the whole, <laughs> We're the, all John, the whole old. team, <laughs> the whole team structure is completely broken and borked. Um, even EG no. is not. The even EG is really just a marketing firm. There, yeah, ha- we have to find more team. ways to create revenue for these teams outside of relying on um, some sort of sponsor every month to subsidize your your travel and things like that. We, we've talked the, about this before. I mean, I think, I think that's the naivety of the scene, though. I think it's the naivety of the the business and the 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 entire esports culture is that. Well, that's why EG we're doing this. Is, show. EG is. E.G. because they get the reason they make money. They understand the reason they make money. Yeah. It's not yeah. our purpose or worry as a scene, especially as organizers, um, that we need to cultivate that in any way. 
We we don't at all at all. We I don't give a shit if E.G. wins or you know Dick Dong Harry wins. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter to me. I'm a I'm a tournament organizer. I'm getting this money to run this organization, this money, this prize pool for the promotion of someone else's product. Yeah, but that's in the perfect world, Eric. I mean, let's no, be no, honest. No, I know, I know. Yeah. The MLE but, but has the set up is, every one of their tournaments to be able to highlight the popular players. I mean, um, yeah, you've just... But, like, but why do we do that, though? <laughs> Are you and I well, do that? We do that We're because we don't have a sustainable to model to not do it. We have to do it. And it might be an unfortunate thing, but I hope that and we're starting to do it. It's easy to pretend way. that this is sustainable. All right. And, it's, and, we're, and it's, we, yeah. we don't, we we don't, better we don't start moving away from you that. Think and te because because teams, have rely, teams have started to rely on that. Like, oh, well, you know, all we have to do is is find a sponsor. That's our first sustainable model, which it's not. No. Um, let's find a sponsor, and it's then not, let's make that, a big name for ourselves, market our you? players, and we'll become very popular. And by doing so, we'll get invited to the invite tournaments. Um, that's the way old model. But you're starting to see, and even MLG, and I praise them recently on this, uh, although they took a couple of steps back recently, but um, I praise them that that they're starting to look at it as real competition because I think that what they're starting to do is that they're starting to see that teams are starting to become more sustainable on their own and they don't have to um, rely so much on the organizations and the organizations don't have to rely so much on the teams. We're starting to see a switch um, uh, in, into new avenues, which is very, very good. But it was it's always been in the past that they're called anchor teams. They are the big popular teams, regardless of how good they are, i.e., Idra or other players that have their their results have have not shown as much as their popularity is. Um, they're called anchor players, and they bring in all of the noobs, all of the fanboys, and and that's the way the system has been ran because that's the way that MLG has been able to very successfully promote their brand, and that's I business. Think, that's just the way it is. I, I think um, it needs to be said that, and tournament organizers specifically need to hear this. Your tournament is only as strong as the teams that are participating in it. If the teams that are participating in it are barely getting by, your tournament eventually will be barely getting by. So, yeah, I mean, it's like yes, it's I like mean, it's that's fairly I do that with with respect to marketing potential, but as far as competition, there's no reason to not promote Battlefield Three. Scumbags 99 team. If they're at the top and they've been winning, there's a reason to promote that. Like, you know what I mean? Right. It's, but you can't but ignore every other team if you if you rely on them to be in your competition. Like, for instance, like I'll, I'll use Check Six and Starcraft. Check Six hardly ever got on stage, yet they were they were a big part in MLG running a successful event because they would send 11 players. Well, one of the things... And one of the those things 11 players the, all had to pay to be in. Yeah. Back in the day, that actually used to exist. Like, teams were forced to compete within forums. There was no such thing as a... I mean, Cal existed. Uh, but back in the day, you had these people that... It was literally fandom where they just lined out each team based on their, their skills, their, their play, their, their, you know, this, they dominate this map. Like, they had these complete and utter, I don't know what the term is, but, like, these printouts, if you would, of, of like, who this team was, how good they were, and how good they were on the map. And now you don't, because there's no, there's no, Fandom, any uh, there is fandom, but it's it's not site based. It's all Reddit. It's all uh, riot riot based. You know what I mean? Like uh, Dota two. It's all on Dota two subform or the Dota two subreddit. Like all you of that. You think it needs to expand more? We, I mean, I, I kind of get that. I don't. I don't know how much more it can expand. Like, yeah, with, but back with, in the day, uh, it was more. I guess specialized, and, and, and I don't think it's it needs still, to be it's more still specialized. Like, I no, mean, every right. team, 
every team kind of owns, you know, they own their own website, they produce their own content, whether that content's received or not is not, is, you know, can vary. They, every team will, you know, do AMAs on Reddit. They, you know, the teams are utilizing Reddit. That's why Reddit got, is such a powerful force. Like, right. I think, I think it's bigger than it should be. I think that as, as much as we rely on Reddit right now, um, to deliver God, I, hope content. Don't, I hope we don't rely on Reddit. It's a we, cesspool. Cut Reddit Please out. Tell me we it don't is. I mean, I don't like. I said I don't necessarily like it. I don't think it's actually good for content creators. I think it's, it's terrible. I think it's. Um, I think it. I think it holds too much power. And if you're not well received on Reddit, you're just not going to make it. Well, I think. Um, I think there's ways to turn that around, though. Uh, but I see what you're I saying. Think I think I, we're getting way, way off track. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I think it's. I think we should just bring. I like. Obviously, that's an interesting topic to talk about. But I think it'd be a bit of a circle jerk. We all dislike Reddit. But um. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, let's let. I guess let's move on to, you know, tournament rules because obviously there's things like. I mean, there was a lot of disruption about IEM, uh, Katowice, and you know because. Gambit Gaming got through, and based on times of their matches, times of their wins, times of their losses, which is obviously flawed. I mean, you don't you don't need to you know convince anyone that that's he heavily flawed. But I think the I think the primary question to start off the conversation about rules is: Do we need a unified body of rules across all tournaments for a specific game? Obviously, it should be game to game based. But do you think there should be, these are the rules for this game, this is how uh, it should be played out? Or do you think that the difference in rules across tournaments is good at all? Like, what do you guys I think? I think it's good. I think it's personally good. I think it allows us to, to find kind of happy mediums. I think every tournament um, should have its own identity in a way. I think you're always going to have a basic set of rules that are applied across all tournaments. Um, obviously, if you're running some sort of circuit, let's say MLG, DreamHack, and and uh, ESL gets together, they might come up with like a base set of rules um, for the game itself, and then each tournament has its own format per, per se. Um, but you have to have, uh, I think you have to allow tournaments to have their own identity in a sense. So I'm okay with there being different rules um, as long as I think the baseline is, is the same. And, and granted, and look at it this way when MLG releases their Call of Duty rule set, Everyone looks to it like it's the god of all rule sets, right? And then, um, and now I'm blanking on the name, but there's... That's, um, that's important, though. Deserto, I think is the name, is the EU. Um, the, the EU Call of Duty rule set is different than the MLG rule set. And, I mean, they're not that hugely different, but like we, we, we look to it like, oh, well, that's the rule set everyone should use. And just because MLG puts out a rule set that that they think is the best doesn't mean it's the best. So I think having tournaments kind of experiment with different things and, and, and change things up and make it a little bit more interesting, I think that's perfectly fine. I think the, the biggest... To expand on that, right, to expand on that, the communities themselves need to develop their own rule sets. They need to develop their own identity with what they're comfortable with playing and not playing with. And that comes from, I mean, from an FPS standpoint, if you take Call of Duty 4, which is monster, it was huge, 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 huge game. But competitively, it wasn't anything remotely like playing a pub Call of Duty 4 game. And that was important because competitively, you need to have certain, uh, it needs to be, there needs to be a standard set there that where, where you can expect to show up to your match on a Monday night or whatever the hell the day is and have that exact same rule set sit. And that, that doesn't exist within MOBAs now because MOBAs are easy to administrate. There's, there are no rule sets. All you do is go on a patch. You just, you just rely on the patch. But from an FPS standpoint, as a tournament administrator, you need to have an understanding and the community needs to have an understanding of what the patch did to your weapon, so on and so forth. And that's where CSGO sits now. Um, you need to have, you need to realize where your community can sit and what they're willing to tolerate, I guess. 
for, for, for a patch, for a, for a, a rule set, if you would. Um, if, if you're not a community that, if you don't give a shit, like a lot of Asian FPS games, like they just kind of patch it at, you know, at, at will, and those games just kind of gallivant around and have fun. But North American based, if you're a community, you need to, you need to really know where your tournament based system sits. And it has to be very, very, very defined. And that's always existed, whether it be Counter-Strike Go, COD, Quake Live, Quake 3. It's, always, it's outside of MOBAs. MOBAs are different, but it's always existed within FPS games, always. I think, so I don't know if I think a, a big thing that should be highlighted with differing rules is I think the, the biggest example that comes to mind and the biggest or the longest standing upset you know, i mean people get upset and then it goes away the next day but you know this one actually lasted about a week or so on reddit or whatever was i remember mlg one of their one of their uh, studio tournaments for league of legends uh, there i think it was like the arena tournaments they were allowed to have coaches actually you know discuss with them and it was a it was an mlg rule yeah back it, it was an mlg days. rule right and it was applied for all team games, and it was applied to League of Legends, but not every team had a coach or a sixth player. I mean, a lot do now because of Riot bringing in uh, substitute players and et cetera. But that's a massive deal when some teams have a distinct advantage, and that's what a lot of people got angry about was, like, all of a sudden there's this rule, and a lot of the teams didn't have the resources to have that rule. And, I mean, there's a lot of argument about, like, well... Every team, every team can have it, so you know it's, you know. Fair. But where did the rule? Where did the rule come from? Was it there from the beginning? It was. It, it was. An, it was an old MLG team rule, like team games. You can have a sixth player. But was it there from the start? From, from the start. From of, the start. Of, yeah. Okay. So here's the thing, they the rule was in place because it was an old MLG rule, and MLG tends to t you know copy and paste their rule sets from different games to other games. The thing is, like, it hadn't been seen in any other MLG competition because Riot was sponsoring the competition directly. Yeah. And if Riot was sponsoring the competition, they went with Riot's rule set. So then when MLG did the arenas, which weren't sponsored by Riot directly, they brought in their own rules and allowed... It was Curse that was using the coach. Yeah. And um, allowed Curse to use their coach because... Well, it was in the rules that they could. There's no rule against, yeah. Yeah, but well, that's that's the rules. That's the rules committee, though. That's. <laughs> but I mean, that's good them. that's it's good that they use the coach. I guess. I mean, I like that's it. it's obviously the argument is. I mean, it's in the rules. There's not break any rules. Use every resource you can. But then you you obviously you have the the I guess the counter argument of, like. All previous MLGs, this was never a factor. All of a sudden, it's a factor. And the teams were told... Uh, I feel like it was not too long in advance, but they were told in advance. I think, I think it was like... A, I think most teams only found out like a week or, a week or so ahead of time that um, they, could, they could have a coach. But then, obviously, you know, TSM, I think CLG didn't have a sixth player. I think... Uh, um, Azubu did though. Azubu had a, a, a it was a Blaze that were there, I believe. It doesn't really matter, but they it was Blaze, yeah. Yeah, it, they they had um they had a coach as well, and it's obviously like it's, yeah, but that's that's community to community though. I mean, rule sets. I mean, John would agree that there needs to be unified rule sets between games themselves, but because within the game. There is a certain expectation between competition. You need, you need to have a, a framework to work within. As here's a the game. thing, Eric. But even here's the, here's, here's uh, where this is different. It's that they had already been using a rule set that was given to them from Riot that Riot wanted to see in League of Legends competitions. They had already been you know, administering it. So then they go into this arena and it's just a lack of planning or a lack of something it because was, let's be honest yeah, well, if somebody's if somebody's over to, at your fun. side if somebody's over at your side in a MOBA game and they're saying a guy's coming it you know to gank your lane right now 
that takes away a lot of the skill of playing MOBAs. I mean, a lot of the skill oh, is map awareness. You don't even need to look at your mini map. I mean, that's just ridiculous. I, I yeah, but if, if the opportunity to have a coach there was for everyone, then yeah, I mean, that's obviously if some no, didn't we're, have we're, one, then that's their loss. I know that's obviously the argument. Say, we're not saying that. But the argument is with with these rules. You know, we're talking about creating a a rule set that everybody can agree upon. If riots right. already given that, you a rule set, again, then that's you the should thing. go. You're with never going to get. You're never going to get everyone to agree on it, and it takes away some of the individuality that some of the smaller tournaments can run. I agree that if if uh, if Riot is going to have if Riot is going to make the MLG and the ESLs a part of their circuit, then they dictate the rules. It's as simple as that. I, I think and that's, they, what's and that's why they've been so involved in the production of things. But if if I'm running a a, a Quake Live tournament and I'm uh, let's say I'm running a Quake Live CTF tournament. And I'm going to put $5,000 on it, and it's just going to be online, or maybe I'm going to have it in Omaha, Nebraska, where you know it's the middle of nowhere. I don't have to follow any rules that anyone else has put out. I can, well, what I can you're going to do is you're going to follow a community standard, though. Yeah, I'll follow a standard, but I can tweak the rules how I, how I see fit, just like I can tweak the format. So if Riot is the one that's involved with the production, or at least – overseeing the production which they very much were in for the lone star lone star clash 2 they were there they had a very certain set, uh, standard that they wanted to see um if they're going to invest in 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 our event then absolutely they should decide those rules but i think between mlg and dreamhack or whatever if they decide that if one says we're going to run call of duty like this and the other one says we're going to tweak it and run it like this I think you absolutely have to have that, and you'll find out later, you know, down the road, what the players felt was the best. But if if MLG just comes out and says these are the rules, and everyone has to jump on board, or you're not, to, you're not to go on the point where the then, where you feel like the players say the best. That's typically defined, though. That's usually a a very, 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 very specific and honest community decision. That's not like a some weirdo. This one kid wants to inst implement this weird rule set. It's, it's usually community defined. So I kind of disagree a baby bit saying that communities themselves should have their rule sets themselves, I guess, in opposition to leagues. Should, should have individual them. rule sets. I don't know. I feel like there should be a like a fairly defined rule set for I mean Riot already does it. I don't it's they they apply their rule set. If they sponsor the event, you use their rule set. And I think I think that but just But that's shitty though. That's a that's a terrible way to go about it though. That's why? terrible. Why is that why is that bad? I mean obviously there's a lack of diversity, etc. but I think the continuity is far more important. I agree. The continuity is there, but the community overall opinion there it, it, it isn't there i mean look at the look at the nfl with uh headshots I, I don't know i don't know another way to term it but like all the issues Helmet with concussions Helmet. and all that shit coming out now that's yeah. that's a big issue with the nfl pa mm -hmm. players union that's a players union it's a union it's not even a just a bunch of kids yeah. dicking around it's a legitimate union and they're worried about their their heads so where do you where do you put that with? Well, I think I don't. I think just I think just because you have defined rules, and and there there's continuity to the rules. I, that doesn't mean necessarily Contin content continuity with the rules. I completely agree with. But I, that doesn't mean defined that defined by the developer is wrong. It, it well, I think be, I think know, should be community based. I think the developer should definitely listen. I mean, uh, you know, a deaf developer is a stupid developer, but. I think that I think we can both say that Riot hasn't necessarily been a deaf developer. No, I don't think I don't uh, think so. I think I'm just you know saying that that's the case that you know that's that's just how it is. But I mean, as long as as long as it listens to the community, I think that's very important. I'm not saying that the developer should be like, well, this, these are our rules, tough luck, play it or you know get out. I think as long as as long as the rules are set up so that you know. Everyone's happy with them. To everyone, you know, the majority is happy with them. It's fine, but I think those rules should carry on across all tournaments with that game. Is what I think, because I mean, you have new viewers that are confused with X, Y, and yeah. Z. 
you have, you know, old viewers that were like, I just watched this tournament and they did this and now they're doing this. Like, where's the competition level? Like, it's For changing. For continuity in the community's sake, yes. Everything, all rule sets should be, that is, should carry over to event to event. Yeah, Absolutely. There's, I'm not saying at all that they should be, you know, locked in and never change. I think that's just stupid and you're asking for a disaster that way. I just think that, yeah. that the, the drastic changes in rules across tournaments for specific games causes a lot more issues than, than the, you know, the pros that it brings to the table. Well, okay. I guess that's, I mean, we've gone for a good hour and 15. So I think that's I think, pretty good. I think that's pretty good. Um, I guess just to, to, to close off, you guys want to give anything to, you know, pump yourself up, your your links and such, your shout outs, as they say. John? Uh, I don't really have any. Oh, okay. John, Eric, Eric, have... Eric wants to. You can shout out to your 24 followers on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's, I'm not trashing him for anyone that is actually watching the show. I'm not, uh, I'm not trashing Eric. He, he, that is a he little, knows he's only got 24. That is a little you need to <laughs> shout out so that you can increase that by double, um, you know, at some point. Um, for me, I'd like to shout out for the, the few people that are watching. Uh, this is how you get things started. Spread the word if you did like it. Hopefully these guys will, you know, I'm sure these guys will have some interesting content on the next show. Um, I'd like to shout out to the International uh, Gaming League, IGL, um, uh, which is at www.playigl.com. And all of the people that I've been working with uh, since I left uh, Cyber Sports Network and all the opportunities that have been there for me, I, I really appreciate it. And a shout out to Riot. I know it's going to be weird, but a shout out to Riot for putting us in this situation to actually have this conversation. Because in the past, we wouldn't even be having this conversation because nobody would even be taking the initiative to see some of this through. So it's really good that they're at least putting it out there and allowing the, the community to have an opportunity to argue um, about it and fight over the terminology. Um, it's good. It's a good thing, and I think we'll uh, we'll start to see some some very good things happen in esports. And with that, you have an opportunity for shows for uh, Call of Duty, Shoot Mania, Smite. I mean, how however how how many other developers do you have that are putting out? That yeah, the, a lot. A games? lot of them now <laughs> are starting to put at least something yep. into esports, which is a very good start. Mm -hmm. I mean. Yep. Before it was, uh, it, it was Valve and, uh, and id Software, and, and now we're getting a lot, well, and id Software is stretching it, but um, we're starting to see a lot more developers uh, put an effort into to being a part of this very small, let's not, let's not, let's not sugarcoat it, putting an effort into being a part of this very small segment of gaming. So it's, it's good. All right. Mm -hmm. Alan? Uh, Eric, do you have anything you want to say? Uh, no. I don't have any ass. followers, so I can't really tell anybody to follow me. But no. <laughs> let's uh, let's work right. on let's work on getting Eric up to thirty by the end of the week. That's a good. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> Get everyone follow followers. Everyone. Oh, you sir. Oh, underscore you sir. It's, it's on the screen. They they see it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Um, I I guess for me, you know, just uh, continue to follow us on Mobile Fire. Uh, you know, the Twitter at Mobile Fire. It's hard to remember um, and our content on the website at www.mobilefire.com slash esports and we will be co covering anything from the LCS to some of the Asian tournaments to you know whatever you guys want you just let us know and um, you know I also write at www.esportsbusiness.com and I basically talk about business theory and how it pertains to esports and I talk about who's doing things good and who's doing things terrible. And um, really good really good stuff there by the way. Yeah. Just to reiterate. Thank Very you. good stuff. Um and that's it for me. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you tune in the next time. Yeah, definitely. Um for me I just pretty much mimic what Alan said in terms of links. Follow me on Twitter. I'm super cool. All my tweets are cool. Um <laughs> <laughs> Just don't follow Eric enough so he passes me in the followers. 
because then <laughs> then I'll just be sad. But yeah, uh, thanks thanks for watching for those who watched and tell all your your esports friends and share the word about for it'll be the same time next week in terms of uh, scheduling. Who you having on? It's next week. not decided yet, but uh, it will any be. Any ideas? Any hints? No hints yet. All right. You have to wait. If you follow, if you, if you follow, if, if you follow the Bobo Fire Twitter, you'll find out. So you should follow that. Yeah. Sure. All right, I'll do that. I actually <laughs> do. Follow yeah, the <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, thanks everyone for watching and tune in next week if you get a chance. Th thank you guys for having having us. Oh, no problem. Yes, it's it's our pleasure.